Good evening, everyone. My name is Sister Jeanette, and I would like to welcome you once again to another Wednesday night Bible study here at Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries in Sacramento, California, where our pastor is Pastor Doris Harrell, and we continue learning out of the book of Proverbs. We are uh, learning tonight on the tongue. We continue on the tongue. Only now we are going into the life of the tongue. We've been learning very much about the death and life being in the power of the tongue. We've learned a lot on the death. And tonight we are going to begin to learn about the life of the, that, that lies in the power of the tongue. So our foundational scripture for our entire lesson on Proverbs is Proverbs 1 one through seven and our very own sister diana will be reading that for us tonight proverbs one through seven the proverbs of solomon son of david king of israel for gaining wisdom and instruction for understanding words of insight for receiving instruction in prudent behavior doing what is right and just and fair for giving prudence to those who are simple knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the saying and the riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despite wisdom and instruction. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for the reading and hearing of your word. We ask you to bless the reading and hearing of your word. And thank you, Sister Diana. Sister Diana, can I ask what translation you have? I like that translation. I have the, uh, the NIV Bible. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And so again, as we continue on, our baseline scripture for the study on the tongue is Proverbs 18 and 21. And we will have our very own Deacon Max read uh, our baseline scripture of 18 and 21, Proverbs 18 and 21. Okay, and it reads as the following, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. So once again, we're remembering that both death and life are in the power of the tongue. And whichever you love is the fruit that you will eat thereof. So if you use, if you love life, then you will eat the fruit of life. If you love death, then you will eat the fruit of death. And then we had did us did um on last week we read, I believe it was in Deuteronomy 28. I'm just gonna do that close. Um If it was Deuteronomy 28 or was it 30 and 28? It, oh, I always get this. It's 30 and 19 and it reads Deuteronomy 30 and 19 as a cross reference scripture. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live so once again that cross reference god gave that to me on last uh, week i believe and um just he has he has called heaven and earth to record this day against you he has said before us Blessing and cursing, life and death, blessing and cursing. But it's up to us to choose. We have to choose which we want, either the life and the blessing or the death and the cursing. And the same thing with our foundation, with our back, our baseline scripture for this study, for our tongue. We have to decide what is going to come from our tongue. Is it going to be death or is it going to be life? 
And with that, remember, if you choose life, you're going to eat the fruit of life. If you choose death, you're going to eat the fruit of death. So we just thank God for his word. We have been really learning to just grow closer to the Lord. So we know that this tongue can be constructive. It, it's not only destructive, but it can also be constructive. It can, it can bring life. Our first scripture that we're going to read is going to be Proverbs 15 and 4. And then I'm going to, I'll read Proverbs 15 and 4. And then we will begin to go around and I will start with Sister Gloria. Excuse me. So Proverbs 15 and 4 reads, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. And so again, we're focusing on the life part of our study. We've done a lot of study on the death part of the tongue. So we want to bring our focus and our attention to the life. And the life is that your tongue can be, when it is wholesome, it is a tree of life. So we want to begin to teach our tongue to be a to be wholesome so that it can give life so that can so that it can bring life that is what we want to begin to train and teach our tongue to do i think we spoke about the teaching on last week as well so let's um, begin. We're going to be start down in the good words. So we want to begin to choose good words to come from our mouth because words have power. If you speak a lot of good words to help someone, to build someone, that is what, again, our focus right now is going to be on the building of a wholesome tongue because we are trying to develop and create that tongue, which um, the power of life. So, Sister Gloria, I'm going to start with you. And this we're going to be plead the word, good words, which is going to be. Pleasing to those who hear. We want our words to be pleasing to those who hear our words. Such words are precious because they are refreshing. They are life-giving. They are encouraging and they are edifying. So we are studying in good words now. And we want what we say to people to be pleasing to them. We want to build them up. We want to encourage them by speaking good words. We want our words to be refreshing to them. We want our words to be life-giving to them. So Sister Gloria is going to read Proverbs 10. You have Proverbs 10, 11. Then you're going to go over to 20 and 21. And then Deaconess, you will read Proverbs 16 and 24. And then Sister Smart, you will read Proverbs 25 and 11. And so we are going to learn here about how our words can be pleasing to those that hear. So we're going to start with Sister Gloria 
with Proverbs 10 and 11. Okay, 10 and 11. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. And then we go down to 20 and 21. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. Amen. So let's just think about that. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. So that is uh, resourceful because you think about a well and a well is, is, is deep down. But when you get to the far part of it, there is refreshing water that you draw from a well. Water we know gives life. We know that it's refreshing. So that is why we also want our words to give that same life, that same refreshment. You know, like on a really hot day, we know we've been having some real hot days. And then you just think of a nice, cool glass of fresh water. How refreshing that is. And what it just does for the inside of you and the outside of you. Our words can be refreshing like that to someone when we speak good words. And then in verse 20, it says, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. Now, later on in the lesson, I want us to remember that choice silver because that, cho that choice silver goes through a process before it becomes that choice silver or that good um, silver, that pure preferred silver. Um, and the heart of the wicked is little worth. There's very little worth. We want our heart to be worthy and wholesome to someone. We want our heart to not be um, have little worth but we want to have value and we want to add value to someone else. And the only way that we can do that is when we begin to train our tongue to speak life. Then it speaks about the lips of the righteous feed many but fools die for want of wisdom. So just imagine your lips of righteousness just feeding so many people. And we're not speaking about feeding food, you know, food that they eat. We're speaking about feeding life that they need. We're talking about giving um encouragement, giving support. When someone is broken and down, ministering to that person and feeding that person what they need more than natural food. Because when your spirit is broken, natural food is not the answer. Natural food is, is that that's that's not the cure. So we're talking about allowing our, our righteousness and our lips to feed many. For there are, and in, in the harvest is truly plenteous. It is, it is, but the laborers are few. So allow us to be among those labors that are helping in the harvest. 
because it's 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 much needed and we gonna and 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 when we get this about really what just what power and value hold the tongue holds we can just begin to go about things a lot differently so now we have a deaconess you're going to be reading 16 and 24 Proverbs 16 and 24. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and mm. health to the bones. Oh my. Now just we we just just we need to just begin to really inhale what we are learning tonight. Just imagine that. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb. We know how the honey comes from the honeycomb and it's just full of that. It's just, it's just full of the sweetness, that honeycomb. That's where the honey, they take that honeycomb that's full of all of that sweet honey and then they take it and they, they scrape the honey off. They pull the honey from the honeycomb. So just imagine your words being that pleasant to someone and how it's going to be sweet to the soul. Oh my God. If we just begin to take this in, it is what we will begin to desire for ourselves. And we'll desire to give that to someone else. That sweetness, that life, that, that, that is coming again from the tongue. This is what the life, the power of life within the tongue brings. It brings health to the bones. Oh my goodness. You know, sometime when them bones, you just, that's, that's meaning that it's given health deep where people can feel it. You're not talking about touching the surface of somebody. You're talking about reaching the very soul and the very bones of somebody. Just imagine that when we choose good words, when we choose to allow life to be the power within our tongue. So then we have Sister Smart and she's going to be reading 25 and 11. Okay. And it reads 25 and 11. A word fitly spoken is like an apple of gold in setting of silver. Listen, now there's that word silver again. And that's going to come up in our lesson. And we're going to really, really break down that silver and be able to apply it to us as as us to apply it to us and just what all we really need in making in in developing this this beautiful tongue of life so a word fitly spoken that means spoken correctly spoken at an appropriate time spoken at a at at the um right uh present at the at the at the right um occasion spoken at an appointed time not not just speaking you know something at the wrong time because how when we say something is as important as what we are saying. So when a word is a word fitly spoken, you have to make sure that the timing is right. You have to make sure that a person is in condition to hear what it is that you are trying to say to them. When a word is fitly spoken, it's like, Apples. And I don't know if you guys remember, and I tried to call Pastor. She had sent us, she taught us a lesson one time, and she sent us this picture 
of these apples of gold in this in this picture it was like um in like almost like a reflective mirror i don't know uh, yeah pastor you remember that that was just like and you were speaking and teaching us about a uh, words uh, fitly spoken and you sent us that and um and it it was just it in that picture that that she sent it helped us it helped us to understand just how precious words that are fitly spoken can be and just how delightful and how pleasing and beautiful they really can be when they are fitly spoken and what they can do for someone we are again we we talking about edifying somebody building somebody up Pulling somebody up when you see that they're down, you know, you have to, when you have to be able, all of this is our training and learning on the life of the tongue. So now we're going to speak about, that's going to bring us to timely words and about how it's sometimes when you say something, it's just as important as what you say. So that word fitly spoken brings us into our next B, which is timely words, knowing how to time our words, knowing when to say something, knowing when it's appropriate to say it. When when should I say this, you know, allow the, the, the Holy Spirit to actually like govern us and our tongue to know when, because a lot of times we, we get the, the warning and the, and the unctioning and we override and then bam, you done, there it is right there. Quick. It happens so fast. So we have to learn how to bring our words timely so that they can be the most effective. So let's go to Proverbs 15 and 23. And I believe now we're back at Sister Diana and Deacon Max and sister gloria you guys will be our readers for this one so so sister diana you're going to be reading proverbs 15 and 23 and deacon max you will be reading proverbs 12 and 25 and sister gloria you will read 15 you will be reading uh 15 and 28 and let's learn about Timing our words. And I have some notes over here on, on there. Okay. And we're ready for you, Sister Diana. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word? Oh, can you read that again? Mm -hmm. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word? Okay, a person finds joy in giving a, did, was that happy word? It's um, APT, apt reply. Oh, an apt word. Yes. Okay. A person finds joy in giving an apt word. Okay. Let me read this one from the um, King James. A man hath joy, which is what your translation says, is, you know, a person, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. 
and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Now we're talking about that timeliness. I think Sister Diana's um, translation read about a time, a word in time or timely word. Good and in, in a timely word, yes. In a yes, in a timely word. Again, we are learning about speaking timely, given because what you may have to say is so good, but it may not be the right time. So we have to learn. All of this is a part of us learning. Is a man hath joy by the answers of his mouth. So again, when you take time to think about and when you're building someone up, you are going to find joy yourself. You're going to receive the joy. When you are building up someone, when you are encouraging someone, when you are giving someone that good word in that timely, in a timely manner, in its due season, at its appointed time, all of those kind of go together. At its appointed time, not out of season, but in due season, at its appointed time, at the right time, at the in a timely um, time. You yourself are going to receive the joy as well. You, It's going to bring joy to you to give someone something that's going to minister down to their soul and give that health to their bones. In Proverbs 16 and 24, what we just read. Proverbs 16 and 24, about those pleasant words. It's going to bring you joy to give, though, let your, let your lips bring forth some pleasant words. That's going to be sweet to somebody's soul. That's going to be health to somebody's bones. But we have to do it timely. We have to know when and when not how and how not we have to do things timely in order for it to be to have the most effect because if the person who you are speaking it to is not in the mindset or in the place where they can receive it then you're kind of working not I don't want to say against yourself but you're working it's not being as beneficial to the person because we are we are talking about helping someone else and in helping other people and in 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 speaking life to other people we speak life for ourselves because why? God's word tells us whatever we love, we're going to eat the fruit thereof. So as we are speaking it to someone else, we are eating it and being partakers of it ourselves. And it is a blessing going and a blessing coming. So I did have a, a cross-reference scripture written down. We're going to go over here to Proverbs 17 and 27. I have that written down with um, Proverbs, with what Sister Diana just read about 23, when a man hath joy. Let's see. Proverbs 17. Oh, yes. Okay. This is going on, we can all turn to Proverbs 17 and 27, because this is going to help us right in this area about due season, timely. So he that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So when he that hath knowledge, when you grow and develop the knowledge, you learn how to spare your words. You learn how to keep 
your words. You learn how to save your words and teach them. We're going to learn about teaching your lips. You have to teach your lips to speak life. You have to teach your lips to speak good words, to know when it's timely, when it's not. It's all about learning the knowledge of God applying it to our life and then we go out and minister to others it's not just about us getting something for ourselves so now we're going to go over thank you sister diana very much so now we have deacon matt you're going to read 12 and 25 and again, we're still learning about timely words. Okay. Starting in verse 12, it says. No, no, no. Okay. You're in chapter 12. 12. Oh, 25. Okay. Verse no, 25. Yes. Okay, yes. Sir. All right. It reads out the following. Heaviness in the heart of a man, of man, maketh it too, but a good work make it it glad okay yep. so now just imagine again we are building up someone so you have someone that that has a heavy heart so the heaviness in the heart it makes them to stoop you know it just weighs them down they're just heavy you know they're sad they're troubled. Sometimes they're confused. You know, matters of the heart. That's why we learned back sometime about guarding your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So when your heart is just heavy and you and you, you know, you're down and you 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 know feeling discouraged. And imagine someone now can give you a word, a good word, and maketh it glad. You know, bring some life to that heart. Bring, lighten that load. That's what we're doing when we're edifying and we're supporting someone and we're encouraging someone. And this is the power of words. We're not talking about doing something for someone physically or, you know, monetarily. We are talking about the real power that our tongue really possesses. And because when someone's heart is heavy and weighed down and they just, money ain't gonna help them feel better. You know, they need something that's going to reach down inside, like those pleasant words that's, that, that, that um, is good, that's health to the bones and sweet to the soul. That's what we want our tongue to become. So now we have Sister Gloria. You have uh, Proverbs 15 and 28. 15, 20. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Now, now look at that. There you have it. Is that not speaking about that timeliness, about sparing your words, teaching your lips to keep your words until it's right? until it's the appropriate time to speak them. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. That means you thinking on what's the right answer for this person. I can't just give this person anything because if you say the wrong thing, you can make the situation worse and you don't have to be speaking something of death. 
But if you speak it out of time and it can make the situation worse, that's why we have to train our tongue, train our lips and to speak timely. We have to study before we answer a question or give an answer. Let a person finish telling you something before you jump to answer it. A lot of times you mean well, but when a person is, sometimes it's all it is, is for you to listen and study up on what you are going to say. And here's the thing, the answer may not come immediate. You may take in what they're saying and then go home, pray about it, study on it, and the Lord will give you the appropriate time to give it. It may not be right then. You may just encourage them with, well, I pray it all works out, or, you know, and then it, the word to edify and build that person up may come later. It does not have to come right then. So that's why we have to study to answer. We don't want to just give somebody something at the wrong time. And again, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things because they don't think about nothing, just, 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 you know, just letting it all flow from the mouth, just let just letting the tongue have its way, not teaching the tongue, not teaching the lips, just you know, pouring out evil things. But we want to learn how to study to answer. So that is that is it for our good words. Do we have any questions or comments before we go into control? Any questions, comments, or um, anything anyone would like to share on the good words? Okay, so now we're going to go on into control and we're going to learn about the benefit of guarding our mouths. The untamable tongue must, excuse me, it must be checked. It has to be checked. It, it just, you know, if not, it's just a, it's just a unruly. And you know what it is. It's unruly. So let me see. I believe now that we are at Deaconess, you are going to start us out with Proverbs 13, 2 and 3. And Sister Smart, you will read 21 and 23. And then we will make it back to Sister Diana, who's going to read 16 and 23. And Deacon Max, you will read 17 and 28. So let me give that to everyone again. So we have Deaconess with 13, 2, and 3. Sister Smart, 21 and 23. Sister Diana, 16 and 23. And Deacon Max, 17 and 28. Because Sister Gloria just, yes, okay. And we are going to now begin to read about some of the benefits. The benefit of guarding our mouth. And it reads, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that opens, openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. 
Oh, wait. Now, Deaconess, I'm going to have you read that three again. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth, openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Lord, we just thank you. Okay, because here we are speaking again about what we're going to eat, the fruit of our mouth. He, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Is that not eating the fruit thereof? The whichever you love, you're going to eat the fruit thereof. So when you love life, you are going to eat that good fruit of life. And here's God's word again, telling us that a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. But the transgressor's soul, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat of violence. That's that death. So again, that's the death that they're going to eat. And we are focusing on the life because we are training our tongue. Because now we're talking about control. We are training our tongue to come into control so that we can eat good fruit of our mouth. And then in three, it reads, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. And that is so very, very true. And this can be literally because when people learn to keep their mouth, they actually keep it their life. There has been times where a person didn't, and we're talking about control here. You know, back some years ago, and the and the and the culture of society now, and just the timing, and you know, it's a difficult time. And so now, more than ever, you need to learn how to keep your mouth so that it can keep your life. And then here's why. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Now, you just want to think, we're just going to, we're not going to even say no particular event or anything. But imagine someone that has went into the wrong situation at the wrong time and got ready to open that mouth so wide to get ready to just start letting all kind of stuff spew out of that mouth. And they've actually lost their life just because they didn't train their tongue to keep their mouth. There have been times people, and I mean, for me, things come to mind, and I'm sure probably for all of us, things can come to mind. We can picture that of somebody just opening their mouth wide, just yakking, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the event is, but they open their mouth wide. They open their lips wide and met destruction right there. And just imagine if they had a, had that control to just keep their mouth. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. That's why some, we have to learn when and when not. Know when to uh -uh, walk away. So this is this is where we're still speaking about 
the life of the tongue. We're just going into a more deep part and protective warnings for ourselves. Because our tongue, when we when we keep our own tongue, that's 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 life. We're still learning about the life of the tongue. And literally, when we keep our own mouth, we learn to keep our own life. So now we are going to have um, Sister Smart. You're you're our next reader with twenty one and twenty three. Okay, 21 and 23 reads. Who, whoever guards his mouth with his and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. Amen. So again, we're learning about some of the benefits of guarding the mouth. So when you keep your mouth and your tongue, you actually keep your soul from troubles. You know, stuff that troubles the soul. Our soul is the very inner part of us. It's our mind, our will, and our emotions. So when we learn to keep our mouth and keep our tongue, we actually keep our soul from troubles. We keep our mind from worrying. We keep our emotions in check and we keep our will under control. And that and we can be happy and joyous. Why? Because we've learned to keep our mouth and to keep our tongue. And so now I believe we have Sister Diana. You're going to read 16 and 23. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent and their tongues promote instructions. Oh, heart of the wise. Read yours again, please. The hearts promote. of the wise make their mouths prudent and their lips promote instructions. Okay, makes their mouths prudent. And we learned that back sometime in our studies about the prudent man. And so in, in King James, it reads, the heart of the wise teaches the mouth. Remember when we were learning earlier about teaching? The, the, the heart of the wise teaches teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. So when your heart begin, is, is wise and it begins, remember, the heart is where all of the issues lie. So when you begin to teach your mouth, you add learning to your lips. So when you teach, because it's all the lips, all of this is the, the mouth, the lips, the tongue, the teeth. It's all a part of the mouth. So when you begin to teach your mouth to control your mouth, to train your mouth, We have to, we have to study to answer. And we do that when we begin to train or teach. And, and so I'm going to say teacheth because the, the word says teacheth his mouth. We have to teach our mouth. It don't know it. It want to say whatever it want to say. It want to do whatever it want to do. The tongue just want to have its way. So we have to teach the mouth how to control the tongue. We have to teach the mouth so that we can add learning to the lips. It's all one. 
It's just different parts of it. So in learning to speak life, we have to take time to teach our lips, teach our mouth so that our lips can learn and the tongue can be controlled. Because again, we're talking about control and taming the tongue because the tongue can't do nothing if the lips don't allow it. And the mouth holds the tongue. The lips guard it, the mouth hold the tongue. So we have to train, we have to teach our mouth. So now we have uh, Deacon Match, you have 17 and 20, 27 and 28. Okay, 17, 27 and 28, it reads as the following. Um, he, even a fool when he holds his No, 27, 27 seven. and 28. 28, okay, both of those, okay. He that has knowledge beareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. 28, even a fool when he holdeth his peace is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Amen. Amen. Now, oh. is that not something? Is that not something? So we spoke a little bit on 27 earlier about um, learning to keep our words. You know, he that hath knowledge, spareth his words, save your words, keep your words. You know, why? Because a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. We want to be of an excellent spirit blameless just be of a beautiful spirit you can just feel that when you think about it when you just really take it in and this is all about we're still learning about this tongue and then in 28 even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. Now, as long as they quiet, holding a peace, you never know until they start opening that mouth wide, and there you have it. But even but when they holding a peace. They count it as wise because you, you know, they, they don't, they, they're not saying anything. And he that shutteth his, his lips again is esteemed a man of understanding. So when you shutteth your lips, a person don't know until you let them know. So when you hold your peace, even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. Because a person, you can't tell on yourself if your mouth ain't moving. You just, mm, imagine that. And then he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. You're counted as somebody of understanding. Hmm. All that's in the power of the tongue. But just imagine when you begin to open it. So let's just learn and try it. We all talking about, we learning about controlling, controlling them very lips and that mouth. In the tongue, just teaching, teaching our teaching, teaching our mouth a new way. So now we have 
uh, Proverbs 28. This is where it speaks about, and we're not going to go all the way down. Well, let's, let's Lord, whatever you say, because I was doing this studying on here and it kind of begins to go back, but there is something that we do need to. So I believe a uh, sister Gloria, I believe it's you now. Um, you will read Proverbs 26, 20, we're going to read it all, but we're going to, we'll, we'll read it all just for the sake of reading it. But we, we learned a lot of this in the, the death of the tongue. So we're going to, we're going to focus more on the, um, the life. So we will read it and then we're going to do our focus. Okay, 26 and 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a tail bearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shirt covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit, deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Gloria. And again, what we are doing is we are focusing on the life. So in 20, where it says, where there is no wood, the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bear, the strife ceaseth. So again, we learned earlier about the tail bear and the strife, but if there's no wood to the fire, if the tail bear, if there's no tail bear, then the strife cease and you have peace. Just like as, as coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. So in other words, you need the, the wood to continue the fire. If you don't, if the once the wood is stopped being applied, the fire is going to go out. Once the tail bear stops, when, when there's no more tail bearing, the strife is going to cease. When, you know, you have, if you don't add any more coals to burning coals, we all done barbecued before. If you don't add more burning coals to the, to the coals, then the coals are going to, they, they need new coals in order to keep hot and wood needs more wood for fire. So is a contentious man to kindle strife. Then we're going to read, okay, and then I'll read 22 and 23. The words of a tail bearer are as wounds, we, they're, they're wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly, just like the pleasant words are sweet to the soul and health to the bones. That's where we want to be, is sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shirt covered with silver dross. Now we're going to spend a couple of minutes right there on that silver dross. And the reason why is because earlier on we were speaking about silver and the choice silver and how, you know, um, and 
the choice silver and the process of that choice silver. So what I so I looked up that word potsherd. So potsherd is a broken piece of ceramic material. A pottery fragment. Okay, so it is a broken piece of pottery. Now, silver dross is a term used to describe the impurities found in silver after it has been mined. You know, people go in these silver mines and they mine the silver and they pull it out. Well, it comes, it don't just be silver, it, it comes. It's, it comes with all of the impurities as well. Well, that dross is the impurity in the silver. But when the silver is refined, it's heated. It, it goes through a cooking process. And what it does is it causes the dross to float to the top and it separates from the metal and the dross forms as a scum. Then you can skim the scum off, leaving only the pure silver. Now, here is the point. A pot shirt is a broken, it's, it's, it's a broken piece of ceramic, of that pottery that holds all of it. It holds the impurities and it holds the purity. And that pottery has got to be completely intact in order to be efficient in separating the, the dross, which is the scum, from the pure silver. So when it has a crack in it or a broken piece in it, then all of the impurities are not gone. Some of the impurities remain and the silver is not pure. So we have to know we do we do not want our lips because God's word compared burning lips and a wicked heart to the pot shirt covered with silver dross. The pot shirt is a hole, it's broken. So the silver dross cannot be completely removed. It will still taint the pure silver. So we don't want any holes. We don't want any, any little breaks for impurities to remain. We want our hearts to be pure. We want our tongue to be pure. We want to apply this lesson of the life so that when we get ready to go forth, we have taught our mouth. We have controlled our mouth. We have learned good words and we have taught, uh, we teacheth our mouth. So we don't wanna be 
like that burning lips. We want our mouth to be pure. We want all of the impurities to come out. We don't want want to leave no rifts and no holes and no anything for nothing. We want our, we want to be able to speak life. So now, now we are at the ear and we are just about done with, with um, our lesson on the power of the ear. And it speaks about people being hungry for gossip. So we have 18 and eight. And I think, let me see, Sister Gloria was the last one to read. So now we're back at Sister Diane. Yes, Pastor. Oh, <clears throat> just one second. Uh, just a minute. Okay. I don't think we're going to have time to do that. Uh, to give it. Uh, okay. What okay. Is it, so we don't want to rush another, through it. Right. Okay. So yes, ma'am. So what should happen is we'll do the power of the ear next week and the questions apply. You can go ahead and do a recap over everything. Yes. Because actually that that last scripture in 26, 22, okay. 28 is really uh, bringing you though. up to right. the power of the ear. With what because the it takes two. Because See, there can be a tail bearer, which is the fire. But if they ain't got nobody to be listening to them, then it's going to go out. The, 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 the listening person, the one that's just there listening, is adding wood to it. So you don't want to be a part of tail bearing or listening. So those go together. So that, uh, that, that control... And the power of the ear, it takes two, because uh, I've looked here where it says uh, the listener and the tailbearer alike are corrupt. So that's going to take time to bring that out. This is this is so much. Uh, OK, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, wisdom that we really need. OK, you know? thank okay. you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. You are absolutely correct. Thank you. Um, so now, Pastor, it, it's in your hands. If no one else has anything that they would like to share, um, we will um, be doing the power of the ear next, next week. And we'll go over our questions. You know what? I will say, it's because I was looking at the related um, passages. You know, it might be a good good time to kind of go over. I don't know if everybody has the lesson, but if you do, the related passages down um, on the bottom of under the questions may be something good for us to um, to go to go over. I was I had thought about that earlier, Pastor. Yeah, that, that would be good. Yeah. Since yeah, they're so there those... part of the they're part of the story, the study, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. All right. Well, praise God. So thank you again, Sister Jeanette, for uh submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit and letting him use you. And a very, very powerful lesson here today. We want to be careful <clears throat> because there's death and life in what we speak. We want to be very careful. That's why we study to make sure what we're saying. We, we can say, literally say the right thing at the wrong time and do harm. And sometimes when you, you're dealing with people, sometimes really the truth is, you don't even really know what to say, but you just think you gotta say something. That's not always, you just wait. Sister uh, Jeanette Brown, just wait. If you have nothing to say, just, just wait. And that's that control. We have to wait on God, wait on the Holy Spirit. It is better to listen. Sometimes that's all people want. You know, listen, study. Is this the right time? 
And, and, and so, so looking at every situation is different. Looking at every situation. If one of the things that I learned as a, as a minister, maybe not even as a minister, as a mother, that if you say something to someone and there's people around, you automatically put them on defense. So sometimes the time is when they're alone. You could have the right thing to say, but it's not the right time. So that's the studying. That's what we have to study because we don't want to uh, cause anybody any grief. We want our words to be wholesome. And not only that, according to Matthew, we're going to be held accountable for every idle word. And why is that? Because of the power in the words, the power in our tongues. So it's a good thing. The, uh, these scriptures here, I believe that we all need to really go over those. I'm really the ones about uh, control. Let me, let me get my glasses. For sure, control and uh, the good words and the control because it just brings home how serious God is about the words that come out of your mouth, how serious he is, because he knows the power. So again, we just thank Sister Jeanette and God bless uh, all of you. I'm going to uh, turn it back over to her. <laughs> she can pray. Uh, then we, uh, she can, I would like for her to pray over that word for you and then we'll give it to Sister Sharon to close us out. Okay, Sister Jeanette, it's back over to you. God bless. Oh, okay. I was raising my hand. Let me lower it. I see it. <laughs> because that was such, I thank you, Pastor, for bringing out that point um, about, you know, when you speak to someone and there's other people around, a lot of times that just automatically sends a person into a defense. And I'm so glad that you brought that out. That's why I was raising my hand. So, dearest Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this word on tonight, Lord. We ask, Lord, that it just takes root in our heart and in our And we praise you for your word. Holy Spirit, just continue to teach us, continue to be with us, continue to dwell in us. Continue to warn us, continue to help us to learn the word of truth, for you are the spirit of truth. And we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this word again. And we just ask that it just takes root in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Oh, and now we have Sister Smart. I'm sorry. Okay. And our, we're reading. Psalms, I mean, yes, yeah, Psalms 19 and 14. And it reads, Let the words of my mouth, let, let the words, let the words of, my, of mouth, my mouth, and the meditation of my heart, and the meditation, and of, my meditation heart, of my heart, of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, be acceptable, acceptable in, in thy sight. sight. O oh Lord, my strength. O oh oh Lord, my strength. my strength. And my Redeemer. And, and my, my Redeemer. Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus', In Jesus name, name, amen. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> well, it was a beautiful God. Bible. Oh, good night. Yes. Love yes. you guys. Good night, good night to all. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Love you guys. Love you guys. Friday morning and Sunday morning. Love us. See you then. Hey, Pastor.